people often reference this little guy as a number, but it's not. It represents infinity, an abstract concept describing something without any bound or larger than any number. It's the only way to describe the number of objects in an unlimited set. We deal with unlimited sets in math all the time, like the counting numbers, integers, and rational numbers. We can't count the number of elements in these sets, but we can prove that two sets contain the same number of elements if they have a one-to-one -one correspondence. We can prove one-to-one -one correspondence if we can pair an element from one set with one from the other set, without ever having to stop or having some left over in one of the sets. For example, we know that there are the same number of triangles as there are circles. Obviously, we can count the number of circles and the number of triangles, and say that there are three of each, but we can also pair each circle with a triangle of the same color. Because each element in the circle set has one corresponding element in the triangle set and vice versa, the two sets have the same number of elements. We can take this concept and apply it to two infinite sets as well. Take the counting numbers and the perfect squares. At a glance, it appears as if the counting numbers have more elements than the perfect squares because the counting numbers contain each element of the squares plus the numbers in between. But we can pair each counting number with its square to get a one-to-one -one correspondence. Even though the squares grow at a much faster rate than the counting numbers, we can't reach the end of either set. We can continue to name one number from each set until the end of time. And every number pairs to another number in the other set because every number has a unique square, which means that the two sets have a one-to-one -one correspondence. Comparing the integers to the counting numbers is a more complex problem. The integer set appears to be larger, because it can be argued that the integers have a 2 to 1 correspondence with the counting numbers, as each counting number can correspond to the same value and its additive inverse in the integer set. A man named David Hilbert was able to solve this problem by comparing the situation to guests staying in a hotel. Let's say a hotel had infinitely many rooms, each of which was on its own floor, and all of the rooms were full. If a new guest needed a room, the hotel could accommodate the request by having each guest move up one room and give the new guest the ground floor. If an infinite number of new guests showed up to the hotel asking for a room, the hotel could have each guest move up to the room number twice that of their original room, and leave a gap for a new guest on every other floor. If we make a space between each counting number and insert the negative numbers in those spaces, and finally place zero at the end, we have created a sequence for the integer set. We will now line the two sets up so that each term of one set corresponds with a term from the other set. Even though the values of the paired terms have no relationship, because we can name a unique number from each set one at a time, the sets have a one-to-one -one correspondence. Therefore, the counting numbers, perfect squares, and integers all have the same number of elements.